Hello and welcome to another vlog, this time from the River Trent. We came off the River Saw last night and um, we didn't really enjoy the River Saw. We were sorely disappointed and I know I've said that before. But yeah, the River Saw was, um, some of it was extremely pretty. Uh, there was a lot of traffic noise, there were a lot of busy roads nearby, and a lot of electricity pylons, which mainly came out of the power station, which you can't actually see behind us now. Anyway, uh, we are very much looking forward to uh, this little section from the River Trent onto the Trent and Mersey Canal uh, and onto Frappy Junction. Sawley Lock's coming up. And we're taking it slow because we aren't sure whether we take the left or the right hand lock. The lock on the left is open now and it looks like someone is descending the lock on the right. So we enter the left hand lock and there's a locky waiting to take our centre line which he'll wrap around a bollard and hand it back to us so we can hold the boat steady against the chamber wall as we rise up in the lock. And out we go into Sawley Cut. This is Sawley Floodlock, which is normally left open, unless the conditions are flooding. If they are closed and you need to go through, you do need to leave a paddle open at either side when you go out of the lock. We're all okay today, no flood conditions. There's the weir, clearly not much current today. Just beyond that, the M1 motorway. Glad I'm not up there. I must admit I've been totally amazed at the size of the river here. I mean it's 95 miles from the mouth at Trent Falls to Trent Lock. I was expecting something about a quarter of this size. That's the mouth of the River Derwent. We're going to the Trenton Mersey Canal. That's the River Trent. The Trent is navigable for about a mile down there, as far as the village of Cavendish Bridge. Two and a half miles upstream from Trent Lock, the Trent and Mersey Canal starts at Derwent Mouth Lock. Ninety-three and a half miles to Preston Brook where it joins the Bridgewater Canal for access to the Mersey and to Manchester. Shardlow is one of the largest and most interesting inland ports in the UK, and so we're mooring up for lunch and to have a look around. Bee Warehouse, built in 1780, known as the Clock Warehouse, is now a restaurant and pub, but was once a corn warehouse where boats could be loaded or unloaded under cover. Sawsby Warehouse, built around 1820. The Sawsby family also had a boatyard in the arm to the left of the warehouse. There they not only built narrow boats but also wider river craft. And now we're just going past the Sawsby's house. E warehouse, probably another grain store, also built in 1792. The village is a fascinating glimpse of 18th century industry. Boat builders, rope makers, stables, forges, carpentry workshops and brewers all supplied the canal and river warehouses. Cargoes such as flint would be transshipped here, 
sailed from Kent to Hull and then brought down the River Trent and then forwarded on the canal to the potteries in Stoke. Salt was brought in the other direction from Northwich and Middlewich and transshipped in Shardlow to be taken to the East Coast fishing ports. To the left more warehousing and a crane dating from 1780 to 1820. The White Cottage used to be the salt warehouse and was built in the early 1700s. This was for boats unloading from the River Trent which is situated just on the other side of the building. A larger salt warehouse was built on the canal opposite this in 1777. We pull in behind this boat in the queue for the lock. The pollution coming from its exhaust was horrendous, so we don't want to get too close. And not only that, it left a trail of diesel or oil in the canal. Not pleasant at all. We moored after the lock for a cup of tea and to allow this boat and its fumes to get well ahead of us. This one's for you, George. Find George's Bridge. The 1st of October and the autumn colours are coming in. Swalkston Pavilion can be seen to the left, dating from the 1630s and was at the time a part of Swalkston Hall. The Rolling Stones did a photo shoot here before its renovation to promote the album Beggar's Banquet. We shared Swalkston Lock, only one more broad lock to go and immediately to the right is the junction with the old Derby Canal. Currently it only runs as far as the bridge. Not an enjoyable sight. Let's hope there were no casualties. Another power station, this time Willington. We pass over the River Dove on a 12 arch aqueduct. Not far from Burton now. In Dallow Lock, Val uses the Morse to keep Reverie fairly central in a 3 foot 6 ascent. It's quite a quick filler and has a lovely mural celebrating the brewery industry of Burton. Wisely enough, this is protected by perspex so dickheads can't spray their tags on it. We're in need of some diesel and Shobnall Marina is the place to get it. I have heard though that you need to reverse in, which clearly the boat in front is doing. So we pull in and wait our turn. Right, here we go. Looking good so far. Ah, 
are not quite, a bit of push and pull is required. This quirky marina is all that's left of the Bond End Canal, which was a mile and a quarter link to the River Trent. Burton on Trent was once set to be the inland port furthest from the sea. Before the arrival of the canal, beer was exported to Germany from here. The river, though, was unreliable, due to it either being too shallow in places or, on other occasions, just going into flood. Suitably topped up, and out we go. And apologies to the viewer in Snail's Pace that I didn't recognise you in Nantwich. Have a good trip. <laughs> We're just leaving Burton on Trent which was a huge surprise to me, not the fact that we're actually leaving it, but the town itself. Now, for some reason, I imagined Burton-on-Trent to be lined with old red brick wharf buildings, but really, it was just tree-lined uh, and the odd little sort of modern housing estate. But there you go. Anyway, Burton-on-Trent uh, is obviously very famous for its brewing. I hope you can hear me above all this traffic noise. Um, it was once the brewing capital of the world. There were a vast number of breweries there. Um, some of my favourite beers actually were brewed in, uh, in Burton. Uh, Bass, oh I love to pint of Bass and um, Marston's Pedigree. Now you don't get much better than that. heading off to the village with the most unpronounceable name in England. Alwash, Alwash, Alwash. I don't know, we might find out when we get there. Uh, we have also got to do a bit of a river section which has a fairly dangerous weir on it. So, um, and it's been raining quite heavily the night before last, so uh, we'll have to see what the state of it is really. Um, yeah, we'll have to have a look at the, the markers in the lock before we go on to the river section. Uh, so, fingers crossed, we'll be able to get through. If not, we'll have to wait. So, it could be quite an eventful and exciting morning. Under Wichnor Bridges and into Wichnor Lock, and we re enter the River Trent. Thankfully, conditions are normal and on green. I've tried twice before to get on this section from the other end, but the river has been in flood on both occasions. Some gorgeous moorings along here, and the beautiful 14th century Wichnor church just coming into view.
A towpath runs along these raised walkways on the right. Looking back towards Wichnor Church. At least the weir is well protected, but you wouldn't want to get caught against the flotation boys. I've also seen a video of a boat going past the weir when the river was high, and it did look pretty hairy. All calm today though. All was lock ahead and the end of the river section. Once through, we can find a mooring for the night. I suppose historically this is quite an important section of the canal and river system. When the canals were first being cut in the 1760s, James Brindley had the vision to connect England's main river systems, the Trent, the Thames, the Mersey and the Severn, which would make the ports of Liverpool, Hull, Bristol and London all accessible via the inland waterways. This could be done by cutting the Trent and Mersey Canal, the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal, the Oxford and the Coventry Canals. This Brindley calls the Grand Cross. So Trent Lock to the junction with the Coventry Canal is, as you can see, an important part of the Grand Cross. It's always nice to get to chat to viewers and put a face to those of you who comment, or even those who don't comment. Anyway, they're ready for the off on their holiday boat and will follow us through the village. Plenty of moorings in the village. The village itself boasts three pubs and a co-op food store, where you can buy overpriced and overpackaged food. Sorry, but I've got a thing about the co-op. Snowman in October. Well, this week it's the Village Scarecrow Festival, so there's a few stuffed oddities about, to say the least. Whoa, hang on. Now we can't see this oncoming boat because we're at the stern and there's a willow blocking our view. But they kindly reverse and with the help of the guy from the green boat get pulled into the side. Many thanks to Skylark. Just left the village of All Rewas. All Rewas. All Rewas. All Rewas. That's how it's pronounced. I have it on good authority. It's All Rewas. Um, which is a very pretty village. Very nice indeed. Lots of lovely thatched cottages and timber frame buildings. Um, but yeah, it was 
nice, wasn't it? it was I nice. thought it was lovely. Yeah, yeah and, very, and very pretty. Very pretty. Yeah, and uh, where are we headed to today? Then how far are we can get? Well, I think we're going to end up in Rugeley, but we are going via Fradders J. Fradders J. <laughs> <laughs> Val has her own language, okay? Fradders J, if you haven't already guessed, is Fradley Junction. So, um, yeah, all right, well, off to Fradders J then, eh? <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just a shout out. Uh, we were just helped through uh, through the look there um, by, by some viewers. Uh, very nice people having an ELO day, hence the um, strange wigs that they were wearing. But they but, look good. Yeah, they look good, and uh, I hope they enjoy the rest of their holiday. New marina going up here. I guess it's Fradder's marina. Very nicely done. Anyone would think you'd done it before. <laughs> Just once or twice. So the first lock at Fradley Junction just coming up. Fradley Junction, uh, as some of you may know, is my second favourite junction that I've been to. Kingswood being the first. A very helpful guy has just opened the, uh, the gates for us. I don't know if his boat is coming down or whether he's just um, sitting there being helpful. Could be a CR... no, he can't be a CRT guy. He hasn't got a life jacket on. Well, he was indeed a CRT volunteer, and yes, he did have a life jacket on. The CRT seem to be having lunch at the cafe. There are CRT offices, rubbish and waste disposal, water points, showers, a cafe, and a nature reserve, and of course, the Mucky Duck pub at Fradley Junction. The Coventry Canal, just off to the left. Whilst cruising past the pub, Val got some admiring comments from the drinkers outside. What are the girls? Hey, nice boat, love. And you're not so bad yourself. <laughs> 